so grateful uh, once again uh, for a great time of worship and uh, experiencing Jesus through song. Um, what a blessing that was. Frankly, the older I get, and it seems that I'm getting older and older, and that's, I suppose, a good thing. The older I get, the more simple I like things. I don't know if it's the aging process. I don't know that our wor if our world is just moving so fast or that I'm just tired of having to learn a new app or a new platform or a new... Where did they put the button for that now? Where, why, did, why did they change things? Every time I turn around, they, they love to change something for every update. It's like, well, why are they doing it that way? You ever get in this spot where it's just, can, can you just leave stuff alone for a little bit? I mean, it, it's only been a few months and now you changed it again. I, and it, it sounds like I'm a crotchety old man, probably because I am. But it seems that my world is working against me because it becomes more and more and more complex, more and more. And here's the funny thing. Here's the irony of that. And you'll hear me often rail against technology. I'm not against technology. It's that in an effort to make things easier, they make things more complex. They make things more difficult. They, it, it's just in this great desire to somehow make my life better, they've made it more difficult. And I understand their hearts. And, and that's the whole problem. Instead of making things simpler, instead of making things uh, easier for us, they make it far more complex, far more difficult than it needs to be. They're solving problems they don't need to fix. See, I don't need new features at the cost of more complexity and having to learn something new constantly. Well, that's what keeps you young. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure I want to stay that young if that's the price that I have to pay. See, now that's the beautiful part of Christianity. Following Jesus, you understand that when the gospel came into place, when God's fulfillment came about, you understand it moved from complex to more simple. You don't understand that, right? See, Christianity is the simplification of the purpose of God in our lives. And I want to show that to you because Paul has been talking about that. Look with me in Romans chapter 8, if you will. Uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Big difference there. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10 is where we'll be at. And you know that uh, Paul has been trying to express to the Romans, hey, this is what Christianity looks like. Let me tell you what, what following Jesus is and he lays out to this church that he's never been to, he lays out to them, hey, this is, this is my understanding of the gospel. And I want to show you the process that, that we're going through and what practical, real living and following Jesus looks like. And he lays it out. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. He comes and he says this. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandment, commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other commands there may be, are summed up in this command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Now that, honestly, he comes down and he's been talking about what it looks like to live out life in the body of Christ, what it looks like to submit to authority, and what it looks like to live in a society. And then he comes down to this, and it seems, I'll be honest with you, when I read this, and, 
And, and, and as I've worked through this, I was like, this is, too, this is too easy. This is too simple. Is this really Paul writing this? Is there a misinterpretation here? Is there something gone awry? Somehow, this, this doesn't seem, hey, there's not enough to do here. See, Paul, everything he's been saying about, hey, this is, this is what Christianity looks like. And he comes down and it all culminates here in verses 8 through 10. In essence, if you want to talk about what Christianity is to be about, this is what he says. He says, listen, it's summed up all, whatever other commands there are, summed up in love your neighbor as yourself. That seems like, that's just too simple. Now, I like simple, but it seems too simple. Because I'll be honest with you, my whole life I've been told, look, you do this and you don't do this. And you don't do this and you do this. This is the list, do the list. Hey, follow, listen, you've got to be there every, you've got to do this on Wednesday night. You've got to, hey, listen, don't do that. Don't, no, nope, don't treat other people. And you have this litany of things. I was teaching a senior Bible class this past, past week, and we were talking about, uh, it was my last, my last few moments with this particular class, and we were talking about what they'd learned and what they hadn't learned and all these kind of things, and, 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 and one or two of the students said, look, it's just, it's just too much to remember. It's so complex. And of course, I had to argue with them. It is not complex. It is not overwhelming. In fact, Paul, that's the whole point of what Paul is saying here. This is, this is not complex. This is not that hard. This is not, and listen, you want to understand it. Let's put it, let's tie it up and wrap it up with a little bow. Here it is. And Paul says in verses 8 through 10, is that, listen, you don't owe anybody anything. In fact, some translations and some interpreters would say that, listen, don't be in debt except to have a debt of love. Now, that's good, simple advice. Don't live in debt except to live. Now, is, is that a command? Is Paul making that? You know, it's just a general understanding. Listen, if you want to operate well, don't be in debt. Don't live your life in debt to others except... You are in a debt of love. What's the debt of love? Well, God has loved you, so now you love others. And the debt is not to them, but it's to God. Very simple. You don't owe anything, anybody anything except the debt of love. Listen, you have a debt, and you must pay love. Then he goes into verse 9. He says, the commandments... And he lists them out of Leviticus chapter uh, you know, 19 and he, he, number of Exodus, and you can, you can go back and find that. And so he lists them not in order, but he lists the seventh command, the sixth command, the eighth command, and the tenth command in that order. Very interesting. He, he says, listen, he, these are the so, this is the social section of the Ten Commandments. This is how you treat other people. This is how you operate with other people. So he takes that. This isn't towards God. This is towards other people. And he takes this, and it's like, wow, is he making stuff up here? Look with me what he says. You shall not commit adultery. Somebody else. You shall not murder. Somebody else. You shall not steal. Somebody else. You shall not covet. Somebody else. And whatever other command there may be, they are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, here's what's interesting is, is that Paul is just repeating what Jesus has already said in numerous different places we find in the Synoptic Gospels and even in the, in the Gospel of John. Let me read to you what Jesus says, and this is just one of the places. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, <clears throat> he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul 
and with all your mind, the Shema, right? So this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And all the law and the prophets hang on these two commands. So Paul is just simply repeating what Jesus has already said. Paul is simply saying, hey, listen, if you want, you, here's simple. Do what Jesus says. The Shema, which is love God with everything you've got and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, what's interesting is, is that every time they use the word love, it's that agape word. It's that God-given, God-enabled, God-created. This is not what, this is not phileo. This isn't brotherly, hey, let's lock arms, let's walk down the road together. This is the idea of God coming, and it's this all-encompassing, overwhelming, I accept you for who you are, I can just love you just as you are, kind of love. And only God can enable that kind of love. Because he has given it to us, he then chooses to give it through us to other people. So it's not about following, hey, don't commit adultery, don't murder other people, don't steal, don't covet, all those kind of things. See, Paul is, is saying, hey, listen, this is not about tick the boxes. This isn't, hey, do all this stuff. It's really just one thing. Love God. Love others. You say those are two different things. Well, really, it's not. It's just about love. That's why he says, listen, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Sounds too simple. I want it to be more complex. How do you do that? Just love. Well, I don't know how to do that. Just love. See, here's our problem. We want to make things more complex. That's why all my apps have to change every couple weeks. Quit trying to make it easier. It doesn't need to be. Would you see it, it, it comes down to this whole thing. If you want it, if you want to follow God, just love. Live in his love, love other people. It sounds too easy. Because that kind of love fulfills all the Mosaic law. Do I am I obeying the law? Don't need to worry about it. Are you operating in love? Because this divine, God-enabled. Love does not harm others. See, you and I are called to operate in this kind of love that we would constantly, overwhelmingly, be caught up in loving others. It's simple. It's, re it's easier than remembering, okay, did I murder somebody today? Have I stolen something? No, no, no. It becomes this whole thing where I am willing to do what Jesus says, and that is love God with everything I have and love my neighbor as myself because all the law and the prophets hang on those. So instead of making this complex this morning, I really just have to ask, am I willing for my relationship with God, my lifestyle, my Christianity, my following of the truth? Am I willing to be simple? What would happen if, if every action towards my family, see that's the hardest place, every action towards my family, every action towards my coworkers, every action towards the other students in my class, every action towards the neighbor, Every action to the postman, every action to, to the lady at the checkout, every action would operate in love. Not your love, not because I like that person, not because I'm supposed to like, but because God has now enabled me by the power of His Spirit to love unconditionally. Because I am experiencing that kind of love from God. What if driving down the road, that guy that cuts me off, he becomes, what if, what if every action were motivated out of the agape love, out of God-created purposeful love for others? 
as well as for myself. That every intention, every plan, every desire, every motivation would come out of that kind of love towards others. See, I think there would be a whole lot less mental health issues. I think there'd be a whole lot less conflict in our nation. I think, what if just Christians decided, I'm just going to love? Well, they're binary. Can I love homosexual? Yes. See, agape love is not, I have to agree with everything you do. Agape love says, I'm going to love you just the way you are with the love of God. See, that's where it gets messy. Does that mean I tell that, hey, your lifestyle is correct? Or, hey, you're sleeping with, with your boss's wife? Or you're stealing from the company till? You see, this kind of love says, I'm going to accept you the way you are, and I'm going to choose to let the judgment, remember we've talked about this, I'm going to allow the judgment of God to deal with you, not me. That means that I can love you and embrace you. I don't have to participate in your actions. I don't have to participate in your mindset. See, what, what, who was Paul talking to in Rome? Talking to people that were pagan worshipers? That were constantly going to the the brothel, that were involved in homosexuality, that were involved in all the things that, that we as Christians say, we've got to make a stand. But you know what? The call is not that I correct them. The call is that I love them just where they're at. Not my participating, not my enabling, but my loving them, just as God loved me. See, it's simple. I'm convinced that our world would be transformed because we chose to not do what we think should happen. We allow God to love others through us. I know it's easier said than done, but that's the call of the passage. That's what Paul is saying. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Let's pray. Father, would you teach us to live in this kind of love, your kind of love? Would you come and do that kind of love through us? Would you cause us to, to not get caught up in exactly how we're supposed to do it exactly right, but that we would allow your agape love, a purposeful love, an intentional love, a motivation for others, not out of judgment, not out of have to, not out of correction, but out of loving embrace like you embraced us. As you called us to something better, would you cause us to live that way in our classrooms, in our offices, in our neighborhoods, down at the Kroger, on the sports field, with our family, in our home. Show us what that looks like, that we would not compromise your truth, but we would live in your overwhelming agape love towards one another. Come and live that simplicity through us that you might be seen, that your world would come to know you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.